Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health workers are critical if we are to close the health gap. They are highly trained and highly skilled. They're also challenging the rest of Australia to see the need for a holistic and culturally safe approach to health. Bachelor Institute of Indigenous Tertiary Education is about 100 kilometres south of Darwin. Indigenous health students come to Bachelor as adults with previous life and education experience, bringing with them their own knowledge, languages and culture. Bachelor embraces the both ways philosophy of education that brings together Indigenous Australian traditions of knowledge and Western academic discipline and cultural contexts. Learning is undertaken on campus, in the community and in the clinic. In our training here at Bachelor Institute, my job is to get across the impact that since colonisation with the introduction of um, a lot of diseases, a lot of different foods and the loss of land, that it's changed our practices. If someone does a lot of their spiritual healing on the land and you lose your land and you don't have that connection to the land, then that will impact on your holistic health sense. Start in the middle, then they stick. So it's not just a matter of, you know, take two Panadol and call me in the morning or here's some antibiotics that'll fix you or I'll go and give you some heart surgery or whatever. It's this whole gamut of things that uh, that'll impact on, especially Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people's health and wellbeing. Folks, today we're going to learn about um, menopuncture. That's taking blood out of somebody. I've been uh, asked to come over today to uh, work with the students doing the bachelor course and uh, in the bachelor mock clinic, helping them doing suturing and menopuncture. So we get our patient to stick his arm out if we've got to take blood for, uh, to send away the pathology. I've been a health worker for 18 years and I've been registered now for about two years. I love being a health worker. I really do. I um, really, really enjoy being a health worker. I love helping people, and uh, this job is right down that alley, and I love it. And um, I'm, I've been in this game for a long time, and I'm, not, I'm just refreshed as I've always been, fresh, you know, willing to learn, and I learn every day. Let your patients see you washing your hands. I took a long road around, became a school teacher first, couldn't cut it there, so I went into education administration and then I um, was employed by the health department as an administrator first, health worker manager. And while I was being a manager, they wanted me to um, uh, have health worker qualifications to hold my position. So that's how I became a health worker. I was the manager first and I became the health worker. To do Certificate 3 and Certificate 4, it depends on the individual. So we all know we need a mask. Yes. It depends on your previous experience. You might bring some other health experience into it. If you start to do your training and you do one or two units and then there's a lot of sorry business or there's cultural reasons, um, um, ceremonies that you have to go to and you can't keep up, then we just slow it down to your pace. The other students might keep moving through, so we've got the fast tracking students and the normal pace students and the slower pace. So the competency based training is designed to cater for everyone's needs. Tighten it up now. We get our needle ready. And, you know, myself, I was very shy, but I had the need to, you know, want to help people. I've always been like that, and I thought the health work is probably the best way I could do that, you know. So I had to overcome a lot of stuff and acquire a lot of skills myself, you know. And uh, here I am. Trick trotter the room, which much more better to use. I am a health worker, and I'm trying to study more in health you know, to be more qualified. Going up to probably stage four, couple of years, two years of time. The best thing about being an Aboriginal health worker is that you get to work within your community and with the change in the national registration now you will have an opportunity to work outside of your community. Oh, I've got to get my girls to get them ready for dancing. Most health workers know their communities. They know the underlying issues. Hello doggy. Safety. Primary healthcare starts in the home, then it moves from there, as opposed to the other model which starts from the hospital and works out to the home and the community. 
as Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health worker practitioners, we also gain these advanced clinical skills and they should complement our roles as primary health care workers. Then I'll get you down to bed the coffee. Excuse me, the health worker is not only a clinician, he fills a whole um, lot of other roles as well. So interpreter, you know, liaison officer, the point of contact for people who want informants filled out, health promotion officer. And in some instances, the Aboriginal health worker is a really vital part of the health team in the clinic as a go-between with Indigenous and non-Indigenous staff. And this is all on top of being a clinician, you know, so yeah, it's... Uh, it's a multitask role, really. And in these images, you can see that there's a toe block. So there's all different ways. I've been an Aboriginal health practitioner now for the past 10 years and a bit. And for the last 12 months, I've been here in Bachelor Institute, being a course coordinator lecturer. But prior to that, I worked at an AMS in Darwin City. As a generalist health worker, you work in all domains it's not just specialising in child health, family health, or acute or chronic. You're across the board. And I'm going to get you to brush your teeth. So this job is a job where you have to be uh, someone that likes being around a lot of people, uh, giving attention to people one on one, um, and having a lot of perseverance and patience. I get Irish to pump a hand. So that's good for the lovely way. In the past 10 years, I've worked with a lot of non-Indigenous staff, and I must say that I've been very lucky. A lot of them have uh, come in with an open mind and an open heart, and have worked really well. And then I've worked with others that are not so uh, open or uh, ready to participate and look at us as a different way whereas they think that the rest of Australia is all the same. Up here it is different, and it is different in each community that you work in. So you must take notice of what's happening there before you put your feet in your mouth, so to speak, because it is different, and it does pay to step back, watch, listen, and ask lots of questions before you dive in, because I've seen that actually disrupt where a patient's come in, they've come so far with their treatment, and then somebody's come in, their bedside manner's right off, or their understanding of the situation wasn't right. They've said something, just, just this one little thing out of place, and we've lost the patient. They won't come back. So there's a lot of cultural issues that non-Indigenous people, it'd be nice for them to learn and slowly uptake that as they're having their journey in that community. You do not touch your face again with your hands. Breathe through your nose. We have our training and then you have on-the-job training where you learn more in-depth information about what it is that you've just seen today and how you can best maintain that when you work as, as a team member in the clinical setting, in a hospital setting. So we get this now. You're right now, we found the vein. The skills that you have are very important because they're skills that you use to look after somebody, but sometimes in situations where it's life-threatening, you can be the person that's the lifesaver. How are you feeling, Stephen? Over the years, you learn to be more empathetic and understanding through experience, um, and not just experience on the job, but life experience, because as you go through things in your life, that then is something that you take on board when you're doing this job as an Aboriginal health practitioner because really it's a, a job where you have to be showing a lot of humility. I love doing health work, the clinical stuff and all that, working with people on the ground and here I am. Now we've got Bachelor College and there's a lot of people from all over the territory involved in how to become a health worker in their communities. Well, no, bro. Right. Better than me. I love being a health worker, and that's my profession.